All right. Welcome to another episode of Comic Book Squares. We just want to remind everybody about our big contest for 2023. We're going to help find a new writer in comic books. We're partnered with Dream Foundry on this. And uh, just remember, the deadline is the end of September to get your uh, stories in. So to kick the show off, my name's Shane. I'm Paul. I'm Ben. And I'm Mike. Let's get this show started. All right, welcome back, everybody, to our newest episode of Comic Book Squares. We're happy to share some time with another great comic creator. For this episode, Ben and I are going to be visiting with comic writer Travis Gibb. Travis is the writer and creator of any comics like Coins of Judas, Granite State Punk, and Voodoo Nations. Travis has works published by Image, Scout Comics, Caliber Comics, and Band of Bards. So with that, we're going to go ahead and get started. Travis, why don't you go ahead and kick us off. Tell us a little bit about your latest project. Uh, yeah, so my latest project just wrapped up. Uh, we just finished our, our latest book, which is Expired 2. You know, it's going to be sent out to backers. It's the second one in a series that I created on Kickstarter. Uh, it's it's very, very cool. But now that that's done, we're wrapping up to the next direct market stuff, which is Coins of Judas, a gambler that's coming out pretty soon, and Granite State Punk Breaking Edge, which is coming out uh, for Scout. So it's a busy year for Indie Me. Travis, I noticed that uh, Granite State Park was actually on um, on uh, Previews World, so that's uh, that kind of caught my eye. There's there's some other, uh, you know, I won't say similar books because there doesn't seem like there's anything like that. But you know, as far as the colors and sort of that uh, that just sort of that uh, real, I don't know that that uh, that kind of radical storyline, you know, with the with the rocker and all this other stuff. That just all this other, you know, kind of you know genres you brought into this um you know tell us a little bit about that because i i I really i really like the the look of that book yeah it it's been surreal man i just got back from new hampshire for free comic book day so i i drove up to new hampshire with my family and did a signing at uh, jetpack comics jetpack comics is a huge comic store out there um and it was about that book you know great estate punk being uh set in that hometown i set it in that area um Great Estate Punk is probably my most personal of all my comics. Uh, my grandparents uh, and my mom and my dad, they all died in like two years of each other. So like every two years, one of them would die. And kind of like I was done with the state. Like I was just kind of done. Every time I'd go there was for a funeral for someone who I really cared about. or I'd have to emergency rush there. So I just kind of done with it. And I've been not shy about it in other interviews that my parents, I come from a drug and alcohol family. So it's just a lot of dark stuff in my past there. But in between, you know, all those deaths, I uh, had a I had a son, you know, my son's four years old now. And I had to figure out a way to rekindle my love of the state to show my kid where I came from. Right. Even though my parents are dead, like I still have an obligation. You know, I still have brothers and stuff like that. So I wrote this really dark <laughs> punk rock story about uh, the New Hampshire. And uh, you guys probably don't know a lot about New Hampshire. You guys aren't from there. Uh, but uh, New Hampshire has <laughs> no. many, like, nobody's from there, right? There's like a, <laughs> seven people live there. Uh, <laughs> Travis isn't even from there, but it makes right, sense. I'm not here in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> um, but those seven people all buy my comics, so it's very good. They really like it. <laughs> and, so, anyways, if you look at any license plate or any of the New Hampshire merch or marketer, it has this, this face on a rock. And it's called the old man in the mountain. So it's a natural form that forms a face on a rock. And if you go to a certain spot, you can see it. It's kind of cool, except for it fell and broke in 2013. So it's been 20 years that it's fell. And oh man, I just want to give you an idea. They're still not over it. I took a picture on my Facebook of a news <laughs> article when I was there of them still talking about it. They're still not. Oh there. man. You know, between oh, that and Tom gosh. Brady, there's been a lot of heartache for New England <laughs> <laughs> in this, this oh, century. Because they also were still talking about, there was big Patriot, t- a New Hampshire magazine about the New England Patriot, about Tom Brady. Oh, like, my God. It hasn't been there for a few years, guys. Like, come on. <laughs> we need to move. <laughs> so, was that, but, so is that why you went to Florida? You're just following him? Yeah, I was following Tom Brady. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's what we do. Uh you know, yeah, I, had yeah, right. to wait, I had to wait till Dunkin' Donuts was fully in place in Florida, and then I was on my way. 
So I, I, I was stationed out east for a short amount of time. I was in New London, Connecticut, and uh, a friend of mine uh, and I were, were out there. And uh, we, we had to make a choice um, over the long weekend uh, when we took some leave which way to drive. We ended up going to Boston instead of New York. Everybody else wanted to go to New York. I wanted to go to Boston. And, of course, on the way, you know, we're driving around Rhode Island and all this other stuff. But I realized that apparently there's two things in Rhode Island, according to the billboards. And that's Dunkin' Donuts and strip clubs. <laughs> and I thought, I, I could put some roots down here, you know. <laughs> It, it's a good place if you can afford it. Yeah, I, we just drove yeah. up there and it was really funny. You don't realize how rich Connecticut is until you drive yeah. through it. Like they have fancy, True. like uh, like they paint the metal of the side of the roads to a brown so it looks like it's wood. Like, yep. like, like just way <laughs> yeah. Yeah. unnecessary yeah. stuff. <laughs> yeah, I was, uh, you know, I was out there too. I went, so I was in New London and I, I went up to uh, Mystic and Niantic and places like that. It's yeah. I mean, there's some money up there. It's nice. Yeah. Speaking of money, uh, this is a good segue coins of Judas. <laughs> Can, <laughs> you like that? That was, was pretty good. Uh, right. so, um, so can you tell us, cause you said that was, you know, Paul was mentioning that and you mentioned that book as well. And, uh, cause that one they can, people can, uh, you know, pick up right now. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about, uh, the coins of Judah's story in the background? Cause I, you know, I know that it's, you know, it's asking the question, what happened to those, was it 30 pieces of silver that uh, Judas was given for, you know, um, uh, for betraying Christ. And so that was like the first question, you know, but how did that all evolve into this, this series? And, and yeah, can you tell us a little bit more about that? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's available through Band of Bards. Both issues are done. I wanted to, you may be able to pick it up on your uh, local comic store. I also wanted to make it clear that uh, Great Estate Punk is also available too. It just came out last month. So you should be able to pick it up everywhere. Uh, but Coins of Judas, it's a really interesting story. Much like I, I know that you guys have a really cool script writing contest coming up, which I think is very, very cool. Uh, I love that you guys are yes. doing that. Uh, this book was submitted as a Mad Cave talent search. You know how they do that once a year. They do their Mad Cave. Yeah. They submitted it as a Wolfenheart story. So I did a small little eight-page Wolfenheart story. Uh, they rejected, uh, they, they clearly didn't read my credits. I was like, I work for image. They were like, no, we don't care. Uh, and they said no. And I submitted it to uh, a small up and coming company band of bars. I really like them. They've been doing a whole bunch of really good stuff. They're really friendly with the indie community. And I had a small little name and I was like, Oh, let me, let me help you guys out. You guys are doing an anthology. I'll submit it to your anthology. I'll pay for the art and like, it, it'll help get you a bigger name on your, your anthology. I was trying to help, help them out. And they replied to me, no, we can't accept it. And I was like, damn, all right, this story's clearly bad. And then I kept reading and it said, we want a full series of this. Can you do that? And I was like, oh, damn. All right, cool. So nice. we, we nice. came to an agreement and we, we did a two issue story arc. So we, back in, back in the day, they used to do Two or two story arcs, you know, Marvel two and one was like a two parter, you know, kind of couple yeah. two parters, two parter, two parter. Yep. So I wanted to throw that back. So I did a two parter of Coins of Judas about, you know, what happens when these uh coins came to the earth. In this world, uh demons were spawned. So there's thirty demons connected to each piece of silver. That that demon is associated with the worst thing you can buy with money. Um so you're you're <laughs> So you're, there's these two demon hunters that have been around for 2,000 years, a family of them that are hunting these these coins, and there's lots of orders. It's like a cross between John Wick, because I've got a lot of that 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 crazy gun stuff, the crazy violence, with uh, Supernatural, like a kind of a cross between, between the two. But yeah. it's a lot of fun. We did two. It did really well, sold out at Diamond, had nine variant covers from different stores, and we're just coming back. We just announced on Free Comic Book Day that Coins of Judas, the Gambler, is coming out uh, later this year. It's going to be in the next solicit. That is awesome. Fantastic. Did uh, did you have the idea for this uh, this third story and pitch it to them, or did they come back to you and be like, we need more? Because this apparently is, you know, people are eating it up. Uh, a little bit of both. So uh, it was doing so well. So I knew that the, there was an opportunity to talk about the, that, the way that would work. We also, our goal was to do... Uh, I just have a great Kickstarter presence. So we were going to do the issues in diamond and then do a trade 
And then I realized that because I had this two-parter idea, a 48-page trade is not very exciting. So we need mm. to do at least another two, right, to, 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 <laughs> to get people excited. So, yeah, so I had a good idea and people liked it. And like I said, it's, it's such a strange book for me because everything about it is not normal for me. Like I got rejected. It's rejected twice, but it's now a series. The artist that I picked for it is just a friend of mine who had done it, who we just like each other, but I'm not a manga guy. He has a manga style. So I just put him on to the thing. I was like, Oh, we've always wanted to work together. Let's do the small LA pager. Apparently now it's a series. So we're doing a series. <laughs> Uh, and it's it's the one book I don't have any control over because ever I'm like I hate this like there's a there's in manga they do this like uh, silhouette of like red and white sometimes if you, you know what I'm talking about where they switch yeah. the colors it's like a two color palette I hate that I like traditional comics I'm a Marvel and DC guy that's horrible to me <laughs> and everyone on my team is like but that's the way manga does it it looks really great I'm like all right. This is not my book. I just write it. <laughs> I just write it. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> well, you know, that I, Paul and I usually ask folks like this about like that creative control too, right? Or or when it like goes from your head, especially when we talk to writers, right? When it goes from your head and then it kind of now it's out there and as the script how much control do you have over it? So, so working with your friend who's in manga, it sounds like, you know, you still have obviously some input, I would assume, sure. but you know, you have to let him do his thing. Right. Yeah. And I, and I wrote it that way too. I actually changed some of my writing style. Like there's literally like four pages. I was like, here's a fight scene. Here's how I need it to end. Do your manga fight thing. Like, I don't, I don't know how that works. <laughs> These are the guys that got to be taken out. Do your thing. Uh, which is kind of fun because that's not the way I do it normally. I full script it all. So that's kind of fun. Uh, and also just making concessions, right? Because um, the demons, like in my world, like I would make them very complicated. They'd all look like stuff. But in manga, it's kind of like the heroes are, are really well designed. And the main bad guys really designed, but if they're minions, like they're not really well designed and they're kind of cartoony. And I'm like, all right, uh, I guess yeah. we'll do it that way. So there's, <laughs> there's a lot to that. And I've adjusted, <laughs> uh, but people really resonate it. They really like it. And people are like, this is your best book. And I was like, okay, cool. Like, that's awesome. Uh, and I'm very proud of the story. The coins of Judas, like the coins part I've had for years, I've always been fascinated with, with Judas, uh, as a, yeah. like, if you asked me who my favorite disciple was in the Bible, I'd be good Judas. Cause that dude makes sense to me. Like, <laughs> he's just like, what the hell are we doing? Like, you need to be arrested. You're out of control, dude. <laughs> You're just like, you resurrected, like law and order is out of control. Like what are we doing? <laughs> Dogs like that, and cats sleeping together. Like, Right. You're, you're total anarchy. Total anarchy. <laughs> you know, and Jesus' response is, you know not what I do. Like, all these vague shit. Like, I don't know what's going on. Like, you need to do, like that would be me. Like, I like what the dude's doing. I like the end result. But in the mess, I'm like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> See, see, I see. I really, I really like, like, the Mel Brooks version in History of the World. Judas, what? <laughs> Are you going to have the soup? <laughs> and he's like, oh, my God. He almost has a heart attack. <laughs> yay, yay, before the night is out, one of you will betray me. And Mel Brooks, Judas, what? <laughs> gives him a heart attack. I love it. Oh, well, you know, I, I, you know in, in, in some of the stuff of yours that I was looking at, what I, what I thought was kind of a neat uh, series that you have was that expired. I thought yeah. that was kind of neat. Um, like, you know, elements of things that we've seen before in other books, right? Sure. You know, sort of the po post-apocalyptic, you know, it's either covered with lava or water or whatever, but I like the mix that you added to it. You know what I mean? I, I, I the, the sort of the added dimension of the gods having like abandoned the planet kind of, you know, it was, it was sort of their doing and, and now they just sort of left and now there's, you know, this ragtag band, you know, Again, a lot of elements I think we've seen before, but I really like the way that you put it together. I, I thought the art and stories were really good. Yeah, I believe it or not, it it stems for I've had parts of that idea for a while. Uh, and it's actually a, another guy named Brent Hillmeyer came to me and uh, he was like, hey, I have this idea for islands and keys. And like it was very basic, but he really wanted to do a comic and he was really passionate about it. And I was like, I'll write it. And then I realized I'm writing the whole thing. Like I'm creating the world and doing all this other stuff. But I remember reading uh, Spider-Man 2099 and Thor was being worshipped. And I remember going, 
yeah, that makes sense. He's a god. Why is nobody worshiping him now? Like we read <laughs> right. Wonder Marvel. Like I right. just remember being fascinated by that. So I I started thinking about it, you know, as like kind of a concept. And I, Neil Gaiman's done it way better than me, as I found out later when he did American Gods. Like gods are as good as you're being worshipped, right? So what that looks like. So these <laughs> gods came, kind of got all the worship from these people, and kind of left them to their own devices. But on this world, what's different is if they're not praying enough, like you were basically given a bracelet that tells you how many breaths. So basically the ones who worshiped and loved the gods more got more lifespan. And the other ones who didn't were like, eh, not so much. Uh, (laughs) Yeah, that sounds about right. Right. (laughs) I was like, yep, that's, I, you know, well, there's this uh, book I'm I'm reading right now. Um, I I won't go into the title or anything. I don't want to, you know, you know, cross contaminate or anything, but um, there's, it's it's really interesting. It's it's basically sort of a take on that where uh, you know one of the gods has decided to leave uh, Mount Olympus and leave Zeus and all this and sort of make it on their own and and become um, you know part of the human world. And uh, Zeus and his group are not very happy, and so he sends waves of the other gods after this this one to just try to take her out. Um, and so she's trying to make it, you know, sort of not, not really human, but, but as a human. Um, and it's like, you know, they've decimated the planet. So when the soldiers, the foot soldiers of Zeus come to the planet and they're walking around, people are like, you know, muttering to them, swearing at them under their breath, but they dare not say anything out loud, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. It's like, you know, but again, if they don't worship or at least act it, then the gods will just finish the job sort of, you know? Yeah. Well, that's why the Kratos is so mad in God of War. That's what I hear. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Not a big fan. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Well, where do you? I mean, I. So okay, I I, I write uh, play scripts, and you know, Paul's written you know comic book scripts and ideas back in the day, and you're right. And so people ask the you know they always ask the question, you know, where do you get your ideas from? But I'm, which is like, you know, hard to answer, but with some of these, you know, I'm noticing some like themes of the supernatural and, you know, mythology and stuff following through here. Is that something that you're fascinated with? And, and like, that's where your mind kind of goes when you're ideating stories or is it, uh, is it, you know, just luck of the draw that that happens to be what you've been writing recently? Um, well, first, before I answer that, you're clearly more talented than both of us because you could do stage left, stage right. I tried to write a play <laughs> once. It was impossible. I've read screenplays. I've read books, but, but plays, it's just too much. I want to. It's a dream of mine, but it's, yeah. I don't, it's, it's impossible. I don't know how you do that. I, I've even written right. one, and someone had to make it into a play because I was like, here, like, do it. Oh, t- change it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. You do the stage stuff. I don't know how to do it. Yeah. Uh, and a couple of them, it was well-liked, but uh, it's it's nearly impossible to write <laughs> too yeah. many too many things <laughs> yeah there's a lot yeah a lot to yeah. consider uh, true. So, yeah, that, <laughs> no, no, no. i get fascinated by playwriting like i really need to take a class because it's really fascinating to me and i've only it's got a it whole big. other yeah whole other <laughs> thought process <laughs> um but so i am religious uh i actually am an official pastor believe it or not even though i say that oh. quite a bit uh and i don't uh in most of my books you would never believe that i'm a pastor because of things that i say uh but uh you know and, you know that whole glorifying judas thing that's probably not gonna work out well for me. <laughs> um Look, your next look, sermon? As, <laughs> hey, hey as, as, as long as you don't try to marry ben and i before we get off this call i'm good <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know i think uh i think the there's a lot to uh the spiritual side of things i've always been fascinated by the supernatural uh in studying uh, all religions when i was growing up but i i really like that stuff like if you give me a comic book it's either gonna be it's always gonna be a, a ground level superhero or ghost rider like we're gonna go into the ghost rider swamp yeah. things where that's just the stuff that i like and that i resonate to uh, i mean in high school, I wore all black and a trench coat in Highlander, guaranteeing myself I wouldn't get laid, watching a show that nobody knew existed. Uh, you know, you know. Oh, I loved Highlander. The movies and the fan. show. Oh. Um, Part two so doesn't I, exist, but, you know, whatever. If you watch the right version, it makes sense in some continuity, but you got to watch like 12 to find it. Right. <laughs> 
<laughs> um, so, so writing about the supernatural good versus evil is, is a lot of fun for me. And I, I like that aspect. Um, I like to, to get deep, you know, my, my personal life, you know, as I said, I came from drug I like to put a lot of incorporate a lot of that stuff in and build these, these dramatic characters. But most, most of the stuff I write, believe it or not, is it's about love. Like if you're not writing about love, what are you doing? Like, I just hide it really well. Mine, all these other things <laughs> and all i i have my biggest my series that i'm going on the kickstarter next is called broke dead of florida bodies i don't even have a woman in it till issue five and then you find out the whole thing's a love story i just mess with people it's just uh nice. you know it's all about love, love and compassion and good stuff and good vibes but uh but yeah supernatural i love that i study i like i like that stuff i like using folklore and like history and like kind of twisting it to your own thing and making it your own. Yeah. That's the, um, you know, that's one of the fascinating things about mythology too, is you find all the, all the mythologies of the world, you can find little bits that cross over, you know, which is very strange, like different gods or goddesses or other heroes and stuff that have similar stories. And these are like, mythologies that are continents apart you know so that's another fascinating thing to that, that i see you know folks playing with and in, in uh in some of these story you know stories that we see nowadays yeah which is it's it's really weird that i have that so much supernatural stuff but i clearly don't do anything in the traditional fantasy right you don't see like i'm not doing another dungeons and dragons story you know yeah. I'm not, <laughs> not doing that i always do i have to do a sci-fi or you know modern punk you know wiccan you know uh, or whatever i'm doing next so voodoo nations is about you know the struggle of uh it's a it's about a missionary who goes to brazil and they're they're not strong in their faith and they meet a voodoo priest and they kind of take over the whole territory and the voodoo priest kind of messes with their day and messes up their marriage and all that but really you know if you bottle down without all the supernatural stuff it's really about people who weren't strong in their faith who didn't believe in what they thought and using it to embed their religion onto somebody else's religion and they're you it's a religious war that they're fighting that if they would have just tried uh, to work together could have did, done so many great things you know and and kind of getting a little bit of what i believe out there you know i don't believe yeah. that you know especially when we're talking about christians that christians should we don't need to go and paint a fence in brazil right they can paint a fence send them money like give them something they actually need <laughs> like, like we, yeah. we we do fake bullshit that's not real like and i hate that so i i kind of want to do that and that's what that story is about about how i feel missionaries treat they go and the, your religion is horrible well no they were helping for years and years before you decided you're better than them. like that's not that's not what you do why don't you just tell them what you believe walk away and see what happens if you really believe there is a god like you shouldn't need to hold their hand like right, <laughs> right. <laughs> no, got a little deep sense. here. I apologize. No, 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 that's good. <laughs> no, no. no, that makes sense. You know, it, <laughs> I, I, to me, it ties back to well, what you were saying about your your fascination with with Judas, right? Which that now that makes more sense in hearing you talk about some of these other things, like the, um, you know, people losing their their faith or or not, you know, <clears throat> be and then being more easily twisted because of that. And so you bring up the coins of Judas and your fascination. You're talking about your fascination with uh, Judas earlier and knowing how that happened to him. You know, his faith was was shaky, you know, if you will. And it was able to be manipulated and, and all that stuff because of that. So, yeah, it seems like it all you have this that thread tying through there. That makes sense. Yeah. I mean, for me, like, especially when you specifically talk about Judas, like it's very fascinating. People like to go, oh, he's a bad guy. Like even the Bible, every time they mention Judas the betrayer, like not very yeah. good storytellers, those guys. They just tell you right off the bat, like really spoiler, right off the bat. They they should have spoiler warnings. In fact, that's what I'd like to write a modern Bible spoiler warning. The betrayer. Right. Yeah. TLDR, <laughs> Judas the betrayer. Right. Right. Save well, all that... the endings. Right? Yeah. Right. Just skip to the end, right? Just, you know, the Bible, the graphic novel. Can I just get to the part, you know? Right. But, but what, now, now what about Travis? What about a character like Constantine from DC? Is, is that a character my that I, that's my boy? It sounds like he'd be up here. I, I, I'm a I'm a big Constantine fan as well. Um, I really I really like you know everything that they've done. I 
you know, I love the TV show with Matt Ryan. I was bummed when they took it off. And then I was glad when he, when he, he got, you know, when he got uh, cast into uh, uh, Legends of Tomorrow and, man, he was yeah. the highlight, he was the highlight of that show to me. Um, I really like this stuff. And I, I like when they, when they did Constantine centric stories. Um, I mean, he's a character that I think DC has, you know, um, I think since, like the vertigo stuff they haven't been able to really i don't know if they they just don't have an appetite to go edgy or to kind of because the stuff that they were doing early on with him was was some awesome stuff and it lately it's been a little more tame and i think that's like where like travis your stories can kind of fill that fill that you know that um you know that gap so to speak you know you got some edgy stuff out there that's got the same sort of you know genre that you're bringing together but um, you don't have to worry about somebody from DC looking over your shoulder going, ah, you can't do that. <laughs> can't have them do that. <laughs> yeah. Constant is my boy. In fact, Grant say punk. Uh, most people like when they read it, he even look, kind of looks like Constantine. It was unintentional. Um, I wanted to, I wanted <laughs> yeah. to burn out punk. Like I wanted him to have like, like you could tell, like he used to have a Mohawk, but he doesn't anymore. Yeah. Like that's what I was going for. Yeah. Uh, but I know he the just feeling. happened to have blonde hair. <laughs> right. He happened to have blonde hair. <laughs> Uh, so, so Great to Say Punk is written like an old, um, the old Hellblazer book. Because remember, oh, yeah. Hellblazer back in the day uh, was yep. written one shot that you didn't yes. think were connected until right. you got to issue eight. And That's then you right. find out that everything that you read was That's connected, right. um, which was. That's amazing. what I mean. They don't do that anymore. You know no, what I mean? That's not, what I'm saying is it's not like that. It's, you know, they it's two or three story arcs or one shot, one story. Or the black label three issues and it's over and you're like it just didn't seem like enough yeah he and he's not like the black label one is the only one that, since new dc dc since he fell into dc like he's a yeah. proper dc character now yeah the only thing is that black label book that's felt like a real original yes. constantine because yes. he's gotta screw people he's gotta be like it what you know you, people get mad about all these gay characters. no one's ever been mad that colin constantine's bi like because apparently right. that's so punk rock but, right i know they, they <laughs> never right i mean they, it, it's almost like well well maybe because he's british we're okay it's like what <laughs> it's like come on you know it's like uh, well he's not from america so we're okay with that it was like the, yeah I, they call cigarettes I, fag so i mean it makes sense <laughs> <laughs> yeah they do yeah they do <laughs> I, you know, it was, I, yeah, I loved it. I really did. I, I love the Matt Ryan stuff. Um, you know, when he had his own show, I knew it was too edgy for NBC. So I knew it wasn't going to last long, unfortunately, but I really dug it. And, uh, and that black label stuff was, was some of the best stuff. You know, it's I like, you know, I, I'm, I'm a fan of the Sandman and I was glad when, you know, Gaiman had, a, it seemed like he had a lot of directive control or a lot of maybe yeah. not directorial control, but a lot of creative control over the over the series i thought it was really good and i like the changes they made in it um you know ben and i and, and the rest of the guys have talked about how some of the characters you know what if they just imagine the comic book beat for beat panel for panel people could get bored with that yeah. walking dead did that they 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 took your characters and they reimagined them just a little bit to make it interesting otherwise why would you tune in every day right? yeah well speaking of uh for for your books uh travis which you know, you talked about writing screenplays and stuff too. Which one of your your current slate of of series that you've been working on would you most like to see become a a show or a movie? Well, actually, I just I start with show because they're t completely two different beasts. If you <laughs> if you tackled a show or a movie, so I would like uh, Broke Down and Four Dead Bodies to be a show. Um, and Greta say just for the title movie. alone. Yeah, just yeah, try to well, save that save that on my DVR. What the hell are you watching? <laughs> <laughs> yeah i when i wrote it uh because i've i've had the story in my mind since like 2007 like they'd stopped doing quentin type quentin tarantino type movie shows remember when quentin tarantino was popular like you could get a whole bunch of movies like way of the gun like similar type vein of a quentin tarantino like like movie and they just disappeared yeah. because he was out of pop culture and he was doing westerns and uh <laughs> whatever uh and then kill bill like which is 17 genres in one you know he was he was busy doing other things um so that was the attention but i love i i love crime tv shows and i would have loved to see like reservoir dogs ongoing like continuing from that 
you know, of each of the characters' story and then resurrect Dog and the stuff. You know, I love things like Sons of Anarchy and the Mayans. Uh, yeah. You know, crime, crime stories, I think. I think a good crime, not, I, I think they need low level crime, not like a uh, Sopranos. I think a low level crime of uh, guys who don't know what they're doing, but they're not jokes either, right? Like yeah. they're, they're kind of Breaking in the middle. Bad. Yeah, similar to Breaking Bad. Um, but I, but I think you need it more like a Reservoir Dogs where you're like, they're professionals, but yeah. they're Are psychopaths. They? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Steve Buscemi, yeah. he, Steve Buscemi says several times that he is a professional. So. Right? Yeah. We're professionals. <laughs> People are like, professional what? So that would be the case. And then Granite State Punk, I, I think, makes a good movie. Uh, uh, and... I'll be honest. There's there's some talk. Somebody's interested, uh, but the 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 thing is, I think someone who's interested needs to really get a New Hampshire vibe. You know, one of those seven people, right? Um, <laughs> and, and, and the punk rock vibe because it's it's Grand State Punk's written like a John Constantine and then SLC Punk with mm-hmm. Urban oh, yeah. at the same time. So it's all kind of mixed all those things together, and you really need someone who has a respect for punk rock has respect for like uh, the the lore of New Hampshire and the reason why yeah. this works in there. Because New Hampshire, you may not know this, has some of the craziest laws in the world. No seatbelt. You do not need a seatbelt out there. Uh, no sales tax. <laughs> they believe no sales tax. Their slogan is live free or die. Right. They're extremely yeah. punk rock, <laughs> but not because it's New Hampshire. Just don't know it. <laughs> right. <laughs> but no. Just don't know it. Right. Right, right. All, all they're missing, all they're missing is Broken Lizard next door in Vermont. You know, right. <laughs> right, get some free gambling over there, and we get some strip clubs, and Paul's in. Oh yeah, <laughs> and donuts. And, mm. No, we got Dunkin' Donuts. We're good there. We're we're solid. Yeah, yeah. nice. Ben Affleck has been there. He's made sure everything's good. Him and Matt Damon has cowered the whole yeah, right. New Hampshire. Make sure we're full. <laughs> Matt Damon. So for the movie, if so, okay. So for Grand Estate Punk movie, I mean, who would you want to see star in the lead? And you Ooh. talked about uh, the Constantine um, type character, uh, but I mean, who who would you envision for that? Ooh, that that would be tough uh, because you know I'd want like a Matt Ryan or I'd want a um, I can't even think of the name, main guy from uh, Sons of Anarchy, but like something like that. But they're older, Charlie right? Hunnam. Charlie Hunnam, yeah, yeah. 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 I, so I'd want like a younger version of those guys. I don't watch another enough young teeny bopper movies to know who would be a younger version of that. Because uh, he's <laughs> like in his th- early thirties, like, but but looks young. So I want one of them. I think. Yeah, yeah. Well, now, like a young... well, now, now that Robert Pattinson done, has done emo Batman, you know, you could. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, uh, but he still does not how to know how to deliver dialogue. Maybe he didn't watch that movie. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. There was a reason why you didn't see a lot of Bruce Wayne in that. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, yeah, it, oh. yeah. The voiceover seemed to be like the most imposing part, you know. Right. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic well, that, stuff. Uh, that Austin Butler kid who did Elvis. I saw pictures oh, of yeah. him now in Dune. Yeah, and he shaved his head. Fayed, fade fade uh ralph yeah and yeah i shaved his oh my gosh shaved his eyebrows i'm like that's what we call like a five-year-old uh accidentally grabbing his dad's razor (laughs) i'm trying to make my hair pretty dad (laughs) i wonder if he can fit that look my look and regardless of what i want you know because it's hollywood it'd probably be pete davidson that's you know, yeah, he's, yeah. he's, he's, got, he's, got, he's got tattoos he's punk rock right yeah yeah because <laughs> yeah. yeah. when That'd i think punk rock i think people dating kim kardashian and selena gomez that's what i think <laughs> yeah, <that's totally laughs> punk. Man, man. yeah that would be an interesting take would it not yeah, yeah. oh my gosh <laughs> by the way with the dc merger is the new hell speaking of constantine is the keanu reeves how boy's still gonna happen? I don't know if that got swept under the rug when they canceled everything. I heard, I heard it's rumors, but I, you know, I know they've been talking to him. Uh, there's apparently rumors about uh, Marvel talking to him, Star Wars talking to him, trying to get him in the MCU or the Star Wars universe somehow. So you know, it's it's sad a guy like that who who everybody digs, who everybody that works with loves, took so long, 
you know, and he had to do four John Wick movies, kill a whole bunch of TV people before he finally got, got noticed. Yeah. He's known for, you know, Bill and Ted and murdering people. And now, we, you know, they're giving him good roles. It's like, <laughs> but I, I read that, uh, you know, because James Gunn was talking about having the Elseworlds side yeah. of the whole new DC. And so, like, yeah. that's where Robert Pattinson's Batman is going to live and stuff. So I'm, I'm curious if they're going to do a Constantine 2 with Keanu and keep it in, like, the Elseworlds, you know, pocket. It would be cool. But, uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, he's uh, – I, I like the first one. I thought he did real good in the first one. And, you know, and, yeah. and, and that's, that's exactly sort of that reimagining I was talking about. Like, people are like – well, he didn't wear a brown coat, and uh, he didn't have blonde hair, and he wasn't British. He was Keanu Reeves, man. It was still pretty freaking cool. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah. you if you bang bad on that movie, then then you don't you don't dig that shit. You don't really dig. It, you know, I get it. You know, if you're an originalist, but but you know, give it a break. Yeah, my my only problem with that that film is not really even the film. It was just yeah. I loved the ending of that of the the comic yes. book. You know, the like. Oh, yes. I have made deals with all these demons so I can live and keep smoking. That like that's yep. my whole motive. I did all these yep. things that was, just to keep that smoking. Was him. Yeah, that's when him. you <laughs> added that, like he's trying to save an angel and like do that thing, that kind right. of weakens the like my favorite part of Constantine is like he doesn't give a shit about you. No, <laughs> that's my favorite part. Nope. <laughs> nope. nope. And what and you know, and I thought it was so funny though. You remember the end when him and uh him and um uh, you know, Rachel Weiss are on the roof, right. and he gives her gives her the the fear of destiny, and she right. takes it and and is gonna and is gonna hide it. And um, he he's doing his monologue, his over his voiceover, and all of a sudden he pulls out the thing, and it ends up being chewing gum, and he throws chewing gum, and I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see that coming, you know. I just you're like, I guarantee you, the next exorcism, you're back to cigarettes, you're back to menthols, buddy, without filters. Right. <laughs> <laughs> next time you see something scary and bloody jump out of a mirror and attack some kid you're going to be back to menthols i guarantee you. lucky strikes no filter <laughs> well and, and the chaz the the best portrayal of that movie though is chaz and his ta taxi like like yeah. just his desire to help constantine to get screwed over yeah. and like think he's good at everything was yeah. the best portrayal of chaz because chaz it, it Chaz is such an underloved character yeah. in the Constantine mythos. Yep, yep. Well, and they didn't use a lot of them in the, uh, you know, in Legends. There was no time, right. but like with his own show with uh, the Matt Ryan series, yeah. you know, they he was a he was a really important part. He was he was in there quite a few uh, quite a few episodes. Aside from that that other gal, the actress, I can't remember her name, but uh, I mean, I I really liked that show. I kind of I was bummed when yeah. they pulled it off, but like I said, I knew it wasn't NBC friendly, so I knew it wasn't going to last long, but. Well, and remember, yeah. like mid, it started out kind of weak. Like you're like, oh, this is Constantine Light, this is DC Constantine. Yeah. And then you got to that right brother right. voodoo. Is it brother voodoo? No, what's the voodoo? Yep. Yeah. Brother, brother, brother voodoo. Your brother Midnight. You get him, and you're like, yeah. oh, this is regular yep. Constantine. Look at that. Like, <laughs> here we go. I know where <laughs> we're at <laughs> now. Okay. Took him, took him a little bit. They were working up to it. They were working up to it. <laughs> they heard us. They heard us. Yeah. Oh man. Hey. Uh, Travis, uh, before we uh, head off here, um, I wanted to give you a chance to just tell people where they can find some of your stuff, like uh, what links to go to and and uh, websites or or you know comic book shops or you know whatever you want to tell, whatever you want to plug right now. Talk about the Kickstarters, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, upcoming Kickstarters. Yeah, the the my next Kickstarter is Broke Down Forty Bodies, which is going to be the a trade. Uh, it'll be launching actually in the next couple of weeks. Uh, it'll be a trade for Broke Down Forty Bodies. So if you missed it. Uh, which you probably did because uh, uh, it's been a couple of years since I put out it. I finished it. I've been so busy doing other things uh, that I haven't got it. Uh, the other thing that people really like of mine, it's coming in July. We have official announced date. Uh, that is Cthulhu Invades Neverland. So I do an anthology. I don't know if you guys know that I do it every every year. So we start off with Cthulhu Invades Oz. Next one's Cthulhu Invades. The one after that was Cthulhu Invades Wonderland. This is uh, Neverland. And we've got some really big talent in there. I got Colin Bunn. Uh, which I, which at the oh. time was a good get. Now he's uh, doing like 12 titles a month. So maybe not as good yeah. get as it used to be. <laughs> <laughs> he's a busy cat. He yeah. is a busy cat. Even working yep. back at Marvel. I just read that he's doing yes. Edge of Venomverse. Like, dude yes, does not is. stop. Like, nope. yeah. like, who does he owe money to? Like, I need to know. <laughs> Damn. Uh, he is, he is, uh, Who's but, shaking down who, right? 
right? <laughs> There's some crazy stuff, but a lot of a lot of big indie scene stuff from Pat Shan to to uh, Charlie Stickney to David Byrne to like all a lot of big guys in the indie Kickstarter market who have a couple of books over at uh, you know Scoured or Source Point or Vault. They're they're all in there, so it's going to be a really cool book. Uh, but to find me, it's TravisGibb.substack.com. That's what I recommend to buy the books, OngeComeProductions.com. But if you want Coins of Judas that we talked a lot about or Granite State Fund, go to your local comic store. Ask them. They should be able to get it from Diamond. Uh, if they can't, you can order it from the website. Or uh, ask them why they didn't order it and then shun them. <laughs> yeah, right? right? Where were you on that one? Shame. Very yeah. insult them. They like that. Uh, they like They're it. Right. They love it. <laughs> they love they, it. Uh, all kinds of positive things will happen to your bull list after that. Right. <laughs> Comic stores like to be told that you're smarter than them. They love it. Right. So. They do. <laughs> Just make sure you say that. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you guys still use index cards? Jeez, you ever hear of Excel? <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, to everybody listening and, and watching, uh, if you're if you're watching on YouTube, uh, all those links will be in the description. Uh, if you're listening on one of our podcast channels, uh, take a look at the show notes, and we'll have all the links to to all that that Travis mentioned. Hey, we all really right. appreciate you coming on, Travis. This was yeah. awesome. I you know I know. A lot uh, of fun. Yeah, yeah, and and thanks for just going going with all the tangents with us. We, yep, yep. <laughs> we appreciate. I, I love the show. Uh, you know that's why, even though I wasn't yes wasn't currently promoting anything, I was like, I need to get on the show. I've been try I tried for a long time. There was all sorts of miscommunication and stuff like that. But I love these guys. I, I think you guys have one of the best podcasts out. I think you guys are do a great job, and your guests you guys have are always talking out. So I'm. So excited to Thanks. be here, and thank you guys for having me on. I appreciate it. And if you're listening to this, and you're because you're a fan of mine, please consider that this writing contest is a really, really good deal. It's a really good opportunity. I know if I was at the beginning of my career, this would be definitely the one to hit up because it's from people who are actually people who can tell you whether or not what you need to work on. Right? Like if I submitted to to Top Cow or Mad Cave, they're not going to tell. They're not going to respond. They're going to respond yes or no. Like these guys are fans, so they're actually reading and caring about your stuff. You know, there's all these other variables when you think about like a publisher writing contest of what do we need, what kind of what kind of what kind of story do we need to fill this void or whatever the case would be. They don't have that. They just want to do something good for the community. So take part. Thanks, Absolutely. man. That is we appreciate plan. that, Travis. Yeah. Well, I, I'll tell you. You know, once I read whatever this is going to be. Uh, I will be looking at it to see because, you know, um, that Cthulhu has to invade the Hundred Acre Woods and I need a whole bunch of other writers to do that. So you may get a second yeah. up because that's an invite only. I don't do a, like a casting hall. I, I personally invite yeah. everyone in it. So saying. See, so Travis will be watching. So get your scripts in. I'm watching. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I'm one. I'm one of the New Hampshire's. I, I... <laughs> well, you, to, to be that, you gotta say what's up, guy, and uh, whatever there's a what's up, guy, and then you gotta say sure, sure, like regardless of what you're talking about, just sure. And then if you're pissed, if you're pissed at someone and you're done the conversation, like you know, we're at the end of this, you could be I'm all set. You just yell at them. You're all set. Just all set. I love that. <laughs> now see, now see, well, I, I'm from the Midwest, right? I'm 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 from Chicago land. So we just go when we're tired of shit. We just go. Well, you know, and that's that's. You can interpret that as I'm tired. Uh, get the hell out. I'm sick of you. I've seen enough. You know, whatever. I'm going to bed. That that's you know. Well, slap the table. Slap your thighs. So, you know, well. So now I know what happens when you text me. Welp. <laughs> Ben's going out, well, and I go, shit. well, he's like, damn it. All right. All right, well, that was just a fantastic interview. Thanks so much, Travis. You know, it's always great to have independent creators on the show, and, uh, we, you know, we'd love to give you guys a chance to share uh, what uh, what these creators have been working on with all of us. Um, we enjoy the opportunity to bring the audience something different than what's typically on the shelf. You know, obviously, you know, you got the big two, the big three out there, but, you know, we like to share independent creators as well. And we really want to keep bringing you this kind of content. So don't forget to click the like and subscribe button below. So thanks for watching, listening, whether you're tuning in on uh, YouTube or on the podcast, you know, however you're getting this content. We look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. And remember to look out for the little guy. All right. Take care.